Hello, good morning, it's Phil Thatch, and we are on vacation right now at Universal Studios, Orlando, Florida. This is our second park day, and I've decided not to vlog the entire park like I do at Disney World, but I do still want to do some photography, and I've been in the mood to goof around with infrared for a little while. Uh, my old photography mentor from years ago had an infrared camera converted, and so does now Thomas Heaton, and I do not but I still have an infrared filter, which is like a 15 stop neutral density. You have to really do long exposures or shoot in bright light. And I've decided to try my first composition from right here in this alley looking over at Rip Ride Rocket. So I have my camera perfectly level and this is gonna be one of those shots where you crop a lot of the foreground out. I just want the lines to be straight on the roller coaster in the background and I'm using my BRE1 remote trigger to do a 30 second infrared shot. On this first photograph, I'm going to show you the raw file just so you can kind of see what the infrared filter does. It's very, very dark, so you have to do a very long exposure and it makes everything look red. So, what you do after you get this raw file is you convert it to black and white and then do your edit from there. And as you can see in this shot, I have the camera pointed level. So there's a lot of foreground that I'm gonna crop out, but then once you see the finished product, it will have nice and straight lines. Here is the finished product, and it's been cropped and converted to black and white, and you can see the infrared filter makes the blue sky look very dark, which is very interesting and unusual, and the green trees look bright white, which is also interesting and unusual. Well, now we are in Springfield, AKA Simpsons Land, and I set my camera up right here leveled it up and made another 30 second infrared shot. This is some pretty weird photography, I know. But uh, anyway, the shot might be neat, let's see. Another side effect of doing these extremely long exposures is people who walk by right in front of your camera become almost invisible. Usually it's only their feet that you see because their feet actually stop for a moment as they take each step but they're mostly invisible in the shot. When it's bright and sunny like this, the infrared filter, even though it, it comes out to about a 15 stop, it's not too bad. I just set the ISO 100. The, the R7 will autofocus, even with the, with the um, infrared filter on. And I get the camera level, set it for ISO 100, set it for 30 seconds, and then I adjust the aperture until the exposure's right and make the shot with the remote trigger. When you're trying to frame up compositions here at the theme park with no tripod, sometimes the most important factor is where can I put my tabletop tripod? And with this shot, I was able to frame it up right here with my camera sitting on the top of this post. I wanted to do photography there while I was at Universal and I thought, what can I do to make my photos look not just like something made with an iPhone? And I thought the combination of infrared, ultra wide, and long exposure would really work out to make the photos look like not just snapshots. It's kind of overcast and uh, I found a spot kind of way over where nobody goes, but the rocket roller coaster goes right by here. So uh, I set the tripod up kind of in this area and made a exposure. I'm kind of, instead of using 30 seconds, I'm in bulb mode now. I think I went two minutes and 24 seconds on that one. As you could see in the previous clip, the camera was not level for this shot. So I had to do some straightening of the lines in Lightroom. And usually when I do that, everything looks weird, but these lines straightened up pretty well. And this ended up being one of my favorite photographs of the entire trip. It's the next morning now, and I've got the camera sitting right here on this post, making a shot across the lake at the Hard Rock Cafe. The theme parks are over there and over there, and City Walk and the parking garage are behind me. I made that shot in bulb mode and just took a guess at the exposure. I made the video clip while it was recording the shot and I ended up stopping it at a, a one minute and seven seconds and there's no blinky, so it's gonna be all right. I wanted to make sure and get a photograph of the world's largest Hard Rock Cafe while we were there and in the morning it has good light on it, so this was a good time to do it. Plus my friend Adrian Alford had mentioned this landmark specifically when he talked about his visit from Australia. Well, here we are at City Walk. Uh, it's in the afternoon now, so the light's going in a different direction. 
and I'm still goofing around with the infrared filter. And I needed my camera to be up just a little bit higher to make a photograph over here. So I put it on Heather's scooter and made a shot, 103 seconds. This shot is looking basically in exactly the opposite direction that the previous shot of the Hard Rock Cafe was looking. And there's all sorts of restaurants there at City Walk. We ate at the Vivo Italian Restaurant once and the Cowfish Sushi Burger Bar twice. It's great there. Well, it's getting dark now and I've taken the infrared filter off. I've got Mel's drive-in framed up here at 10 millimeters. Uh, got the camera level again. And I've put a three-stop neutral density filter on. I'm shooting um, F8 and five seconds. So hopefully that'll come out pretty cool. This is a camera level shot that I'll crop the foreground out of. I was really happy with the way this photograph of Mel's drive-in turned out. Pretty decent restaurant too. We ate there once. And this is one of only two photographs in the entire video where I did not use the infrared filter. The other one was this one. This is from our 10th floor hotel room and we stayed at Endless Summer Dockside Resort, which is right across the street from Universal. And there was a lightning storm going on and I just pressed the 10 to 18 lens against the window and made multiple 1.6 second shots until I captured some lightning and here it is. What do you think about my new hat? Well, we're here another morning at Universal and I've been wanting to get a shot of this gate forever and really I should have gotten it the last time we were here because it had bright sun on it and I'm doing infrared and bright sun's better for infrared but you know what I went ahead and stopped this morning because this is our last day I've got the camera set up f8 and 10 millimeters bulb mode I actually started this shot before I started this clip it's got 35 seconds on it I'm gonna let it run about two maybe two and a half minutes there's lots of people moving in but because it's a long exposure shot they'll be at most a blur. So let's take a look at this shot from the entrance of Universal Studios right now. It was just a little bit too cloudy for infrared photography to look the way I really like for it to look with the dark sky. And you can see lots of people that are just basically barely ghosts in this just over three minute shot that I made that morning. All right, I got another infrared shot going. The camera's nowhere near level. I'm on this bridge. One leg of my little tripod is on the, on the piece of wood that's supporting the bridge, but I think I'm level anyway, and uh, taking a long shot with the infrared filter of Hogwarts. I was really worried that there would be motion blur in this shot because the bridge did seem to be wobbling some as people were walking across during my 63 second shot but it turned out to not be too bad. And I did have to straighten up the lines of the castle because as you could see in that clip, the camera was pointing straight up, but Hogwarts looks pretty cool in this long exposure infrared ultra wide shot. Okay, that's gonna do it for me here at the Universal theme parks in Orlando, Florida. Thought while we were here riding rides, I would try to sneak in a photograph every once in a while. And that is the result of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope it wasn't too weird. And if you like the content, a thumbs up is always appreciated. If you want to see some more, subscribe and hit the bell. Bye-bye from Universal Studios, Florida.